Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Um, today I'll be speaking on personal agility. Anyone heard about personal agility before? No one? Only one hand. Okay, I'll be explaining it later. Uh, let me introduce myself first. Um, I'm Avigya Pokhrel. I'm a senior project manager at Encel Asiata. And currently, I've been driving the Azal transformation journey in my organization. Uh, besides that, uh, I'm an agilist who is uh, passionate about driving change in the people, process, uh, tools, and uh, technology domain. Uh, I've, been, um, I've been active in these user groups, uh, just in case if you, uh, you all also want to join. Uh, there is Agile Nepal, uh, there is a Spiral Nepal, and uh, Atlassian user group. So maybe uh, some of you are familiar with that, and maybe some of you would want to join that, then you can check the Facebook or the LinkedIn page as well. Disclaimer first, uh, this personal agility framework was designed initially by Peter Stevens. Anyone heard about Peter Stevens? No? Okay, only a few hands. Uh, so he, he is the one who has designed this framework, and my talk is uh, inspired by his framework. Uh, but I'll be illustrating my experiences and my own uh, exposure to personal agility, how I uh, experienced that, how I came to know about it. So I'll be explaining that using my own experiences. Okay, first of all, what is personal agility? Any guesses? What is it? What could personal agility be? Any guess? The term itself is like it's very, it's personal agility. What could it be? Sure, that's, that's, that's a very good answer. Anything else? No one wants to answer. Okay, fine. It's a simple framework uh, that allows you to do more of uh, what is important, uh, what, what should be done, and discard the things that are of less importance. So it helps you prioritize your entire work, uh, be it in your professional career or your uh, personal goals. So this framework helps you achieve that. Moving forward, uh, how many of you have felt this in your, in your life, like uh, at work or maybe while you know, facing any personal problems? So do you feel like this? Only two, three people. Wow. Okay, now the hands are going up. Good. And, about, uh, and like this, you're getting calls and you're not able to answer. You've got more work to do. So you get overloaded with work, right? You've got like a couple of assignments going on. Uh, maybe you're bounded with uh, maybe two or three projects, and then your manager again steps in and says that, okay, please do this for me, please do me a favor. Can I get this delivered by tonight or maybe by tomorrow or this week? And you all already have a you know, whole lot stack of work pending at your desk. So we feel that, right? Plus we have our own personal priorities as well. You have a family, you have kids, you have spouse, you have your parents to look after. So how do you prioritize the work? How do you balance everything? Do you have a work-life balance? Are you, are you able to do that? Are you able to balance your life? Yes? No answers? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Yes, that's the, that's the situation, yes. And uh, how comfortable are you saying no to your bosses or your peers? Are you comfortable saying no to any task? Yes? So that's, that's very good. Because uh, most of the time what happens is like you're already in a lot of work pressure and uh, somebody or your manager or some senior guys come in, steps in and says that, uh, would, you, would you please do this for me? And at some time you're not able to say no. So the leadership, the art of leadership is in saying no as well. Sometimes say no so that you can you know, work on your priority. So saying yes every time to all the work doesn't mean that you would be delivering everything or you'll be uh, achieving 100% efficiency. Sometimes saying no is also good. Uh, I have a very similar situation. Um, once uh, I, was, uh, I was looking uh, I was looking into a project, uh, which was a critical project, which was a, uh, maybe half a million dollar project, and uh, I had some vendor evaluations to do then. 
And uh, I had the meetings with my vendors who were traveling from, uh, from India, from Australia, from Europe. So on, the very, uh, on that day, I mean, I was fully booked for two weeks. And uh, one day, suddenly during that period, I got a call from my senior manager, the C-level. So he wanted me to work on a project which was very critical. It was a government-imposed project. And the product was to be delivered in two weeks. So what do you think that I did? Did I say yes or did I say no? I could not say no. Because, because it was the CSO who called me. He had faith on me. He had trust on me that I, would, I could deliver this in two, two weeks. And at the same time, I had this project which was ongoing. I had the vendor evaluation, everything. I had the vendors on site. So the balancing the work was really difficult for me. It's then when I realized that saying yes to everything is welcoming problems sometimes. But I was lucky enough that my teammates were very helpful. Uh, the product owner and the technical lead were very helpful. And they managed the other project, the evaluation and everything, uh, with a very little involvement of mine. And I gave my, more attention to this uh, new project that my CSO had asked me to do. So sometimes we get into such kind of pressure. You know, it's, it's about uh, uh, some kind of, uh, what do you say, some kind of peer pressure. Uh, sometimes you cannot say no because somebody has so much faith on you. But you decide wisely, you know. Don't say, don't say yes to everything. Decide wisely. So most of your calendars would be like this. Yeah, sometimes even more. Here you can only see like one meeting in a day, but sometimes you have like two, three meetings in a day. So do you think that's a good thing? Having a lot of meetings? Do you think it is productive? No, right? Uh, do you know what's the average productive hours for, for anyone, for employees? There's a survey done and it says that this number of hours is the actual productive hours that people in a company work. Any guesses? Right, it's four to five hours. So it's, it's that four to five hours that you're actually working, you're actually executing a project, or you're working on that. Uh, rest of the hours you're spending on meetings or preparing reports, chatting, eating, lunch, you know? So, so that's, uh, that's the four to five hours, and you have to make the most out of it then. This is, uh, this is from several surveys that I've uh, taken why people leave their companies or, uh, you know, like they leave their bosses. So it's, it's because, uh, you know, they have got a lot of stress at work. Firstly, they cannot, uh, you know, you cannot manage your work life and your uh, work and life balance is, not, is missing. Um, people tend to burn out because of that. Uh, people think that uh, their bosses or their companies only think about profit, which might be true in some cases and which might not be true always. Um, which would have a negative impact on the employees. So if you're working too much, if you burn out, if you're working like uh, maybe more than uh, 10 hours a day, you need rest, right? You might burn out. So you, you'll be having a very high level of stress. So you'll have difficulties coping with that stress, uh, giving time to yourself. So this is, this is a survey that, uh, that is said that uh, employees would uh, be loyal to their companies if they had a flexible working hour. So we are, we are thankful that most of our companies in Nepal, they give uh, flexible hours, especially in IT industry, because uh, we do a lot of, uh, we, have, uh, we have a client calls, and we have, we have an odd hours of the working as well, right? So we, we are lucky in that context that uh, we have that flexible hours. But again, uh, try to achieve that balance in your life so that you don't burn out. Another thing is, uh, so when you're, like, when you're working on so many assignments, on so many projects, at the same time, you've got your responsibility as a father, as a, as a son, as a husband, you know, as a daughter. So you have all those responsibilities as well, right? So you feel like a donkey who's carrying a lot of load on your back. Yeah? You do feel that, don't you? Yes. So are you doing the things right then? Are you doing the right things then? Do you feel like you're doing the right thing? Not always, right? You, you might be thinking that, okay, uh, what if I could work on this and maybe on that later? Because you have your own responsibilities. You have your work, of course. You have your family. You have your prioritization. So yeah, you need, to, you need to choose wisely. What is the right thing? What is important? What is urgent? 
There's a difference between important and urgent. So, so make a clear difference between that. Uh, with this, like, um, uh, one story. My hubby also, like, he, he's, like he's, he's a workaholic. And I ask him sometimes, don't work so much. So try to create a balance. He's not only workaholic, but he, gives, he tries to give uh, equal, equal amount of time to me, to my little one, to his parents. He tries to socialize. And sometimes uh, what happens is he ends up, when he does, you know, like when he's trying to balance everything, when you're taking a responsibility of everything, you're trying to burden yourself, what happens is you, you happen to have uh, sleepless nights. You can't sleep at nights, right? And if that goes on for a couple of nights, two, three nights, then what happens? You fall ill, right? You fall ill. So another two days you have to rest. So, so try to create that balance, you know, like my hubby does that and after like uh, two, three days when he's sleepless, because he's working on something, he's doing this, he's doing that, he's trying to take all the burden on his head, then what happens is like when you have, you know, a couple of uh, consecutive sleepless nights, you get a headache, you fall ill. So try to avoid that. Make a balance. Yeah? So this is a, a human brain that's multitasking. So let's say like you're working on maybe five assignments, then that's the speed of the brain, that it, that, that's how it functions. So it's not really fast, right? Task one, task two, task five, it's processing very slowly. But at the same time, if you cut down on few tasks, two tasks gone, then that's the speed. So it's actually increasing your efficiency. So what would you say, like, uh, would you rather have uh, maybe uh, five assignments at your hand and work very slowly on all of them, or you would just pick two or three, deliver them fast, efficiently, and then work on the rest. That's a decision that you need to make. What happens when your productivity increases? When you're doing the things right, when you're doing the right things, your productivity increases, you're managing your time efficiently, the quality of your work and your delivery increases. So what happens eventually? What happens? You're happy, you're content, and you're successful. Agree? Yes. So I'll tell you my own story, um, how, I, how, I, uh, how I came to know about this personal agility, and I felt like this is very important, how, how personal agility is very important, and it makes a difference in your life. So I was working in a project, um, on a migration project, where we had to migrate some uh, 16 million uh, subscribers. So it was a huge project, and we'd been working day and night for a couple of months. And then uh, after the project was completed, I had some uh, leave left, so I thought that um, I, would, I would utilize it wisely, and I would go for a holiday. So I thought that, I had few cousins in Sydney, so I thought that, let me go to Sydney, let me explore Sydney. So I went to Sydney, and uh, you know that, again, uh, during weekdays, uh, your cousins go to work, and you go out alone, you go shopping, or you uh, go uh, to see the scenes and everything. So one fine day, I decided to go to Blue Mountains. Have anyone heard about Blue Mountains? Have anyone been to Blue Mountains in, New in Sydney? Okay, just one of them. So it's a very nice place. Uh, it's got this scenic view. Uh, it's got the Three Sisters. Um, anyone heard about Three Sisters Mountain? No one? It's a beautiful place. Uh, it's this historical place, and then they have got eucalyptus forest, waterfalls. Uh, they have a bush, uh, bush walking trail as well. But don't do it alone. Go it with professionals. Um, and they have a tour guide. They have the tour bus, everything. So I, I decided that I will take this tour and uh, and then I took this tour bus, um, I reached, it's in west of Sydney, so it took me like maybe one and a half or two hours to reach there. And then I took a tour bus to that place. So what does the tour bus does it? Uh, it stops at different places. It lets you explore that place for like five minutes, 10 minutes. You hop in and hop off from the bus. You go around, you see the places, and then you again come to the bus, you go to the next stop. Again, you get down, you see the places the mountains, the waterfall, everything. Again, you get into the bus. So that's how you, how you do the tour. So along the tour, what happened is, um, it was about to be lunchtime. It was around 12.30. 12 
and uh, the bus driver said that there was a point, uh, there was a point called Echo Point, from where you could get a very good view of uh, the mountains, the Three Sisters. And uh, there, there, that's the place where you had restaurants as well to have your lunch. Um, so it was the last, uh, not the last stop before lunch, and either you could um, walk to the Echo Point from that point where he dropped us, so it was like a 30 minutes walk, it was supposed to be a 30 minutes walk, or you again like see the place for five minutes, get inside the bus, and the bus would take you to Echo Point. So I thought that uh, it's only 12.30, uh, you know, like uh, lunch time is till two o'clock, why, why you just take a bus, you know, I can walk for 30 minutes, not a big deal, right? So I thought that, okay, uh, let me just explore the place, I will walk to Echo Point. So, uh, so I, I, set out, I set out on this uh, 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 walking trail, and um, there was one French girl as well in, in the same bus, in the same tour with me, and she also decided that she wanted to walk rather than take the bus and go to the point. So we started our journey, we talked about ourselves, and you know, we gelled up quite, uh, quite well, and then we were talking, and then we were walking. So it was like uh, when, you were, when you're starting on a new project, right? You meet your team, and then you're excited about the project, right? So it was, it was something like that. I could relate it like I got a new project. I'm working on it with the team. And then I'm getting to know this new person. And I'm, at the same time, I'm excited about this. So it was on. Uh, so if you know this, uh, Tuckman's, I, I relate this to the Tuckman's stages of team performance. So I was in the forming stage. I met her. I've got a new project. I have to go to Echo Point. And very excited, what's going to happen next. So uh, we started walking through this trail, and uh, what happens in, uh, in this trail is there, the, the cliff itself is uh, the Three Sisters. Uh, it is uh, 920 meters. So there are three cliffs, uh, one 920 meters, uh, another 906 meters, 918 meters. So all 900, around roughly around 920 meters each. And there is a giant stairway uh, which has around 1,000 steps that goes down into the forest. So if you walk down from one of the cliffs, you go across the forest, walk down 1,000 steps, go across the forest for another one or two kilometers. You climb up from another to another cliff, another 900 meters climbing up, and then you come to, another, uh, to, to the other, other cliff. So while we were walking, what happened is we lost our way. We lost our way completely. We were following the trail. We were following the trail, but I don't know how. We, we had the map as well, but we lost, the, uh, we lost our way. And what happened is we started going down the, down the steps. The driver had told us that we would reach in 30 minutes. We had already walked for 40 minutes. We did not reach. 45 minutes, we did not reach. We could not even see like where this echo, echo point could be because there, were, there was no one around. It was only her and me. And we had been going down so much, I think we had already descended some 300 steps. So what she decided is she said that let's go back. Let's climb up the stairs. I said that we've already come so much down. Let's not do that. Let's follow the trail. We are following the trail. Let's go down. Because we could see that there was a village Libra village, somewhere around. So he said that there is a village somewhere down over there, so let's catch a bus from there. So we said, okay, fine. So we, instead of climbing up, we, we, we further descended down. And uh, luckily what happened is uh, we met two other French guys who were also lost in the same tour. They were also exploring and they were also lost. So that gave us a little bit of confidence. Four people lost. Okay, instead of two people being lost, that's something, you know, you, get, you gain that confidence, eh? now you'll come out of the jungle. But what happens is like, um, you started, now you started, uh, you know, you started uh, having doubts on your decision. Are you doing the right thing? Are you, are you right, making the right move, going down? So that's when I started questioning myself. What am I doing? Is it the right thing to do? Didn't know. <laughs> Then uh, it's, it was like when you reach your storming phase, right? Nothing is there. You're lost. I, I, um, I uh, reached to a point 
where I bursted into tears because I thought that I'll be, I'll be dead now. Because we were lost in a jungle, nobody else, only four people over there. And you know the jungles in uh, Australia, they're like, uh, you, you get poisonous snakes. They are very, very deadly, very poisonous. And then uh, you have scorpions and dingoes as well in the jungle. You know dingoes? They're wild dogs. They will eat you. They will not only attack, but they will eat you if they find you. So I thought that, oh my god, why am I here in Australia? Did I come here to die? So I had a fear. I had a fear. I was completely devastated. I started crying. I thought I was hopeless. I thought that now God will only save me. Then I started questioning myself. What are the things that I want to do before dying? There, I thought I was dead. Dead. And then what are the things that you would do if you were not dead? You would do this, you would do that. So I started having priorities as well. <laughs> Yeah, it's strange, but yeah. And, um, um, but we did not lose focus. Um, that village was uh, some, you know, 18th century village, which was already, like, uh, deserted, and there was nothing over there, just, just one shed. Uh, the name was Vibra Village, but nothing, no food, nothing, no people, no buses. It was not a proper village. It was all a uh, deserted village. So yeah, we just had our focus. We thought that uh, we've already lost here. We have to, we've already climbed down this one of the cliffs. Now we don't have any other option rather than moving up to from another cliff. We, we've, we've, we've climbed down, we've come to that, uh, what do you say, to the base of the jungle. Uh, we've already walked like some one and a half kilometers. Now we have to reach to the other, other cliff, right? To the base of the other cliff. We don't have any option and we have to climb back. We cannot, we cannot be left in the jungle. We didn't even have the emergency numbers. We were all foreigners. We did not know that what is the emergency number for Australia. So we had to climb up. We kept that focus on going. Um, it was like a team being intact, gelling up. They knew that they had the focus. The focus was, uh, the focus and the goal was to reach to the top of the cliff, come find your way out. So we kept that in mind and we started ascending up the stairs, another thousand steps to climb, yeah? Um, and what happened is like, um, you know, like while climbing up, uh, when you saw that sun, uh, sunrise, I mean, you see, you got a glimpse of some sunlight, then you were excited, saying that, okay, it's there over there. Now that's the point where I have to reach. Now I can see sunlight. Now I'm going to be safe. And if I reach over there, then my destination, destination has come. So, so, uh, so, so we, we, we had this uh, focus and then we kept on walking. We, uh, we, we kept on climbing the stairs. And uh, thankfully, after being lost in the jungles for three and a half hours, we could make our way out. So during that time, I uh, realized, what is, what is, why, uh, what, what, what are you here for? Like, what is your importance? What do you want to do? What is your priority? So that made, that instinct, uh, that incident gave me a very good instinct that everybody has something to do, right? You cannot be dead in a jungle, <laughs> right? So, um, uh, and then um, that's when, I, like, uh, that's after that I started, I saw some videos of Peter Stevens as well and I was inspired by his framework and I started uh, studying about this framework and started implementing the framework at my end as well to see how it would work. And during this uh, phase, during this uh, being lived, during, uh, during my journey in the jungle, I learned some lesson that not everything is important in your life. You don't have uh, emergencies all the time. There are only fewer emergencies. Um, take a deep insight, you know, ask questions to yourself to get better insights. Uh, collaboration makes team successful because we were already four. We had a focus, we were collaborating, and we were able to come out of the jungle. Say yes to the right moves. Don't experiment too much, but take the right moves. Prioritize work and uh, possibly set short-term and long-term goals, both short as well as long. So these were the lessons that I learned then. And then I also thought about this GROW model. Anyone heard about the GROW model? No? So GROW is uh, the goal. What is your goal? Next, what is the reality? Where are you now? Option, 
what could you do? And the will, what would you do? So figure it out. What's your goal? What's the reality? What are the options that you have? What, what would you do now after having all this information? Then make a realistic plan and then set out for your work. Based on this, uh, you can have a, a personal agility canvas as well. You can have this for your uh, personal life or for some projects that you're undertaking. I'm using this for, um, for the agile transformation journey that I'm working on. So what's the value proposition? What's the goal? Why are you doing this? You. Why is your boss picking you? So what is your value proposition? If there are, if you're not uh, reaching to your goals, why? What are the imp imp impediments over there? So it's for you to realize, it's for you to work upon that. Um, goals again, uh, the way you interact with people. Are you okay to take criticism? Are you open, do you trust them? Do you have faith on them? How do you talk to each other? So that's also very important because communication is a very big part of uh, cultural change. If you're not communicating properly with your peers, with your teammates, with your bosses or with anyone, then it's, it's very difficult to work, right? Communication is an integral part, how you communicate. Are you, being, are you always angry at work or are you gelling up with your team? That's, that's, that's very important. Uh, strengths, what are your strengths? Uh, are you open to take feedbacks? Are you disciplined? So these, these could be your strengths, right? Um, desired changes. So let's say like um, you have this goal. So what are the desired changes that you want in yourself that you can perform better? Maybe you want to become more agile. So what's the desired changes that you want in yourself, not in the system, okay? Again, environment is also important. How could your working environment or how could your uh, working condition impede or make your working conditions even better? So that's an environment factor that you have to look upon as well. Check on that. Fears, concerns, always there. When you're starting on any personal journey or any professional work that you're undertaking, let's say you're, uh, you're, you're working on a transformation project, and the word transformation or transition itself makes you fear, gives you stress. How would you cope with that? That's also a concern. What are your fears? What are your concerns? How would you overcome them? Then you map your, uh, then you map your uh, activity plan. After you have all your, uh, the goals, the strengths, your uh, fears, your concerns, everything, the environment, uh, conditions, everything, then you map, what is your activity now? How would you start on your journey? Plan one, plan two, step one, step two, step three. So that's for you to decide, right? This is a very nice thing. Uh, this is again, um, this, this chart also helps you differentiate between what is important to you and what is urgent. You can see it over here, what matters to you in life. Family, health, business. Top priorities? Yes? Everyone, right? Most of us, let's say, not everyone, but mostly your priorities or what matters are family, health, and business. What is important now? What is important? With family, maybe outing with kids, bring no work, uh, no work home. With business, maybe uh, you have to complete your certification, uh, finalize the promotion list, right? With health, maybe do some morning exercise, go on a cycling or take up some yoga classes. So that could be important. But uh, are the things important really urgent? Not always, right? Maybe only two or three things that are important are urgent. So get that difference. What is important and what is urgent? Urgent is something that needs uh, immediate action or attention. But important is something that is important to you throughout your journey. So differentiate that, and you could have a mapping as such. What is urgent? What is done this week? What could be done next week? So the, uh, the column can increase. So it's, it's for you to customize it. And you could have your schedules planned as such. 
especially for people like me who are working in an IT industry. Uh, your spouses are working, your husband is working, uh, the wife is working, you have a small kid. So uh, you need to balance the time and everything. So it's very useful for people like us to map these priorities. Otherwise, if you're not in sync with your families, then again, your, your daily task is uh, dodged, right? It's, it's just bumble up. So you have to be in sync with that. You could have these priority maps. I have this with my husband. So I have his priorities, I have his urgency list, I have my urgency list. What am I going to do today? What is he going to do today? So that we can take care of the little one as well, right? So that's how we manage our time. So this is, this is, a, this is a very helpful tool. So earlier when you saw that um, so many things were important or so many things were mattered to you, here in the left. But after having this priority map, how many things are important? Are actually the things that matter to you now? Only four things. So out of maybe eight, nine things, you have like maybe 40% of things that are actually important to you now. I'm not saying not at all, but those are the things that are important to you now. So make your priority map like this. See, it's, it's an easy tool. Just, you can have it in the refrigerator as well. Get some post sticks stick it down. Not a very fascinating tool. You don't have to buy a very big thing or anything. Just have a simple chart and post sticks and stick it around. It'll work for you. Okay. So having said that, um, how do I cultivate personal agility then? What, what are the traits? What are the qualities that I need to cultivate this personal agility? Uh, embrace a growth mindset, yes? You should, be have, you should be having that attitude to learn, to accept the criticism, and be open for feedbacks, right? So that's, that's, that's a very important thing. Another thing, change is uncomfortable. Yes, it is un uncomfortable. But how are you willing to come out of your comfort zone? How are you willing to embrace this change? Embrace change, you have to. Lighten your work, like I said. You cannot be a donkey carrying the heavy load all the time. Yeah, prioritize your work, um, have a real, realistic plan, uh, distinguish what is important, what is urgent, and lighten your work. So, um, how, do you f uh, how do you form a cohesive team now? Let's see. You've done all this, uh, you're working on a project, but how do, you gel, uh, how do you gel with your team then? Has anyone read the book, uh, Five Dysfunctions of, uh, of a Team by Patrick Leone? It's a very popular book. All, mostly all CSPs and CSMs would read it. It's, it's a very nice book. And uh, he talks about uh, team dynamics, how can you have productive team dynamics. And he talks, uh, he, he mentions five attributes. One is uh, building trust. Are you able to build that trust with your colleagues, with your peers, with your partners, with your spouse? Yes, that's one thing. Um, mastering conflict. We all are human. Conflicts would always be there. But how would, you, um, how would you face them? How would you mitigate them? How would you challenge them? So mastering conflict is also, it's, it's also an art. It's, an leader, it's a leadership quality. Learn about that. Um, achieving your goal, right? Maybe you have to align with the team, align with the other members who are focused in the same goal, and achieve a team. Have realistic goals. How do you achieve that? Have the plan. Accountability, very important. When you're doing something, you cannot always play a blame game. You cannot say that it was not my fault, it was somebody else who made this mistake, so this, is, this result has come out as the such. Have the accountability, own up to your mistakes. And finally, focus. Focus on the results, focus on the goals, focus on the things that matter, yeah? Again, uh, the important questions then, what are the important questions? What really matters? What, what do I want to do? What did I do last week? What could I do this week, right? Um, who could help me? What do I want to get done? So these are the six questions that you need to question yourself repeatedly to get an insight from yourself. So the question is all inside you. 
You are the one who owns up to your own stories, to your own experiences, to your, to your own work. So question yourself, build an insights, and work upon them. So saying that, um, and don't forget to celebrate your success. Even though it's a small success, just celebrate it. Coca-Cola or Momo party, pizza party, whatever. Celebrate small success. This helps you, you know, this refreshes you and it gives you, um, what do you say, a better thing to do tomorrow as well. So celebrate. Just don't say that this is just a small thing. Okay, just, even if you're just having a small success, just celebrate it. Be happy. And finally, um, I would say that, yes, uh, this is a famous saying by uh, Bill Gates. Uh, success today requires the agility and drive to constantly rethink, reinvigorate, react, and reinvent, so it's, which holds very true. And thank you very much for listening to me. Let me know if you have any questions. <laughs>